सो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू ट्रेन यू फॉर एग्जामिनिंग पेरिफ्रल नर्व इंजरी केस एंड द फर्स्ट एक्सरसाइज इज हाउ टू एग्जामिन केस विद अ रेडियल नर्व पैरालिसिस सो द फर्स्ट एंड फोर मोस्ट इज दैट वेन एवर अ पेशेंट विद अ रेडियल नर्व पैरालिसिस is encountered the first thing that you notice is the deformity at the wrist which is a classical wrist drop deformity along with this there is a loss of digital extension also which is known as in layman's term as a finger drop and uh, the thumb will also not be able to extend we will slowly demonstrate that uh, as we proceed further now what we are i am demonstrating to you is on a normal individual this patient or this individual does not have a, a real time radial nerve paralysis but we are simulating everything to demonstrate the facts for you well in spite of the fact that the patient comes to you with a wrist drop it is advisable that a proper exposure of the almost the entire upper limb be made before you embark upon examining the patient with this uh, we have already taken care to roll up the sleeves of the patient this is important because in cases of peripheral nerve injury in which you may attribute the nerve injury to a particular wound there may be an another wound proximally which may be missed or which may not be even highlighted by the patient himself so again to emphasize proper exposure of the upper limb right up to the the mid arm or proximally if needed especially in cases of brachial plexus injury to start with uh as we follow the dictum of look feel move so the first thing which would be evident would be the wrist drop deformity which uh, is ev evident on inspection hereafter you can ask the patient to try and dorsiflex the wrist which in all probability he will not be able to perform but there are likely to be cases which may have a partial type of paralysis an incomplete paralysis in which some movement may be there or there may be a situation where we have a recovering high radial nerve paralysis and the patient may show some contraction of the extensor muscles which would be evident in this particular area which is the proximal part of the forearm dorsal aspect where we have all the extensor muscles positioned here well it is also important to underscore that certain patients may be using some amount of trick movement so it is important if you feel that the patient is showing some element of dorsiflexion it is important that you put your hand in the proximal forearm and try to palpate try to palpate the the muscle and see whether it is actively contracting or not it is very common to see the patients making a trick movement which is activated by the flexors so the patient would uh, flex the fingers and by tenodesis effect some amount of extension occurs because the extensor group of muscles they come under tension by flexing the wrist so this is an important distractor which you must keep in mind